If I knew this tip 10 years ago, it could have saved me thousands of dollars on having to buy new batteries. So many people are using the wrong type of battery charger for their type of battery and camping setup, which is ultimately killing their batteries a lot more prematurely and often without them even knowing. I want to show you the different battery chargers I run in each of my four wheel drives and how they'll help you make your batteries last as long as possible and make sure you've always got power at your campsite. Fortunately, I own a bunch of different four wheel drives with all very different setups from the most basic charging system in the 47 series in the shed to one of the most advanced systems on the market. So let's start at the beginning and look at the basics. The isolator is the simplest form of dual battery system on the market and it works like this. When you turn your vehicle on, the charge from your alternator is gonna charge up your second battery and also your start battery. The second you turn your vehicle off, well it's gonna isolate that second battery so it doesn't drain your start battery. That way, you'll always be able to turn your vehicle on, doesn't matter how low your second battery gets. Now there's a stack of benefits when it comes to a basic isolator. The main ones being that they're super cheap and also the easiest to install. However, they're limited by how much charge your alternator puts out. So that means they'll charge your battery really, really fast. One of the biggest downsides to an isolator like this is they only really suit older vehicles with a fixed voltage alternator. Now a fixed voltage alternator, as the name suggests, has constant voltage and it doesn't fluctuate. That is because an isolator like this Red Arc one turns on and off based on the voltage it receives. So for example, a modern D4D Toyota Hilux has a temperature compensating alternator. Now, many modern four-wheel drives have what's called a smart alternator. They're smart in the sense that they'll trickle charge your main battery. So they'll charge the battery based on how much voltage is in that main battery. Because they're able to trickle charge, it means the alternator's not working as hard. It goes on and off and therefore puts less strain on the engine and you'll use less fuel. That's why they're smart. However, they don't exactly work well with an isolator. Meaning, when you turn the engine on, it charges at 14 volts to recharge the crank battery. When the engine gets to operating temperature, it drops that down to around 13.3 volts because it's happy that it's got the starter battery back up to being fully charged. The problem is, an isolator like this will turn on at 13.2 volts and turns off at 12.7 volts. So, as your alternator changes voltage, it can be turning your charger on and off at the same time without you even knowing. That means your battery won't be getting fully charged. Isolators are only for vehicles with a fixed voltage alternator. If you have something different, you need to go to the next level of charger. To find out what alternator you have in your four-wheel drive, Red Arc has a great website that can help, which I've put in the description of this video. Here's another limitation that I bet a lot of you guys didn't know. Deep cycle batteries have a maximum amount of current and voltage that they can be charged at. I used to think, probably just like you guys, that the faster you charge a battery, the better. Well, that's not the case. Each particular battery out there has a really specific set of voltage parameters that it needs to be charged at. Most lead acid deep cycle batteries, like your standard wet cell or AGM batteries, can only handle a maximum of 14.6 volts and 30 amps of charge. Any more than this and you could quite literally be cooking your battery. You can find your charging specs when you purchase your battery or by doing a quick Google search on your battery model number. What this means is while an isolator is a cost effective way to charge your second battery and stop your start battery going flat, it won't keep a battery as healthy as smarter chargers out there. An isolator is great for an old bus like this 47 series here, but they're certainly not for everyone because they don't have voltage and current control. Now, if you've got a new vehicle or maybe you just want a longer life out of your deep cycle battery, you really need to go to the next level of battery charger. Well, this right here is a DC-DC charger. Actually, there's a fair bit of history about this particular one because it came out of the original Dirty 30 and it's probably done about 400,000 Ks off-road. But anyway, the main difference between this and say an isolator is that it actually controls the voltage and current going into your batteries. As mentioned earlier, batteries have a maximum current and voltage that they can handle. However, charging a battery is much more complicated than just jamming as much power into it as quick as it can handle. So, what this BC-DC charger does that an isolator can't is charge your batteries in stages. The first stage, it puts in big current to charge fast and get it to about 80%. The second stage, it'll reduce the current and increase the voltage, which is exactly what a deep cycle battery needs to get 100% charged. When your battery gets to 100%, it changes its state of charge to something that's called float charging. Now what that basically means is, it trickle charges a little bit of voltage and current into that battery to maintain 100% charge. 
so you get your full amount of amps in that battery you can use whenever you like, but more importantly, it protects your battery from overcharging. That way your battery is gonna last longer. You should get the fastest charger your battery can handle. So, if you've got a regular AGM battery that can handle, say, 14.6 volts and 30 amps of charge, you should get a charger with 25 to 30 amps of charging power. If you have two of those batteries, then you can charge them at double the current. So your battery bank can handle 60 amps of charge, so you can run something like the BCDC-1250D, which is the exact same setup in the 79. You can use a smaller charger on that battery bank, but it'll take a lot longer to charge. So we recommend the highest amp rated charger that your batteries can handle. I reckon that's a pretty simple rule to live by. The only real limitation to the DC-DC charger, like a BCDC-1225D or a 1250D, is the fact it doesn't have a readable monitor to tell you how your 12 volt system is performing. Alright guys, it's competition time and I'm feeling very generous. One lucky person is going to win the exact right battery charger for their particular needs. Now, to win, all you need to do is really simple. Go in the comments below, let me know what four-wheel drive you've got, what sort of battery, how many batteries, and what you want out of your 12 volt system. I want to go through every single comment, and I want to comment next to the one that's going to win. So it really is that simple. Check back in a couple of days to make sure you've won. If you have won, we're going to get in touch with you and give you the perfect Red Arc battery charger for your needs. How good is that? Now, picture yourself driving your four-wheel drive around without a fuel gauge. Now, you'd probably risk it going to the shops and back, but you wouldn't risk it for a big trip, and that's exactly like your 12-volt system. Now, if you don't have a battery monitor or some sort of way to find out exactly what your charging system and your batteries are up to, you know, you really can't go on those big trips. On a smaller trip, you can get away with it, but going to a place like Cape York or the Simpson Desert, you really need to know what your batteries are doing. Sooty's ready for just about any big trip around Australia, and that's largely thanks to the 12 volt system. It's running a Manager 30. Now, a Manager 30 will charge a battery just like any other DC to DC 30 amp charger, but the really cool thing about this one is I can monitor exactly what my batteries are doing. When it comes to monitoring your batteries, there's three things you need to know about. The first one is very obvious, how much charge your battery's got left. So, this little screen tells me how much percentage of battery life I have left, because I've plugged in how many amp hours my batteries are. The second is how many amps all your accessories are drawing. Because it's useless knowing how many amp hours your batteries have left if you don't know how fast you're using them. And finally, how much charge is going into your system from your solar or your alternator. Again, important because it'll give you an indication of how fast you're topping up the batteries. Because the Manager 30 can measure all three, it can give really accurate indicators of how many days and hours I have left of battery life before I need to do something about it. If you've only got a basic battery monitor like this, you're probably wondering, how do I tell how much battery power I've got left based on voltage? Here's a really simple and rough guide. Once it reads about 12 volts, your battery is probably about 50% discharged. Meaning, if it's a regular deep cycle, it'll need charging as soon as possible before risking damage. Once it's reading around 10 to 10 and a half volts, your battery is dead flat, and while it'll charge up, it'll never be as good as it was new again. Another added bonus with the Manager 30 is it comes with an inbuilt 240 volt charger. I find this really handy, especially in a vehicle like Sooty, that in between trips it actually sit around for a month or two without being used. So what I do when I get home is I take it down to the shed, I plug it straight into mains power, and the Manager 30 will keep my batteries topped up in great health. But I gotta be honest with you guys, just recently I actually forgot to plug it in for about two months. So of course my batteries went flat and I actually killed both batteries, which turns out to be a very expensive exercise. So it's good to know that a Manager 30 like this will keep your batteries topped up and keep your batteries in great health. I reckon the Manager 30 is perfectly suited to like a caravan or a camper trailer that sits around a while, or a vehicle like this, which isn't your daily driver. Now you're probably sitting at home with a pretty good idea of what sort of battery charge you're going to need in your four-wheel drive. But let yourself dream for a second, because I'm about to throw a bit of a spanner in the works. What would be your ultimate 12 volt system? Because what I'm about to show you next is literally going to change the way that you think about 12 volt. Now, a lot of these sort of systems can be very complex, but this one's not. This one's also easy to install and a lot more cost effective than you might think. Let me introduce to you Red Arc's Red Vision. Now, you might be thinking Red Vision is a little bit too complicated for what you need, but it's actually quite the opposite. Let me explain. 
The build plan for the Dirty 30 was quite simple. I wanted to build the ultimate Land Cruiser. I didn't want to skimp on absolutely anything and certainly not the 12 volt system. After chatting to a few mates who are 12 volt gurus who do 12 volt builds for a living, I started explaining what I needed. I needed a bunch of fuses, heaps of switches, there was a stack of 12 volt accessories going to this thing. It was going to be quite the complex system. Then they suggested to me that I should check out Red Arc's Red Vision. So laid out on this table is all the sort of 12 volt gear you need to do a very basic 12 volt setup. So you've got switches, you've got a bunch of wiring, you've got fuses, you've got a few relays, you've got some circuit breakers, a bunch of different connectors, some heat shrink, you know, all the basic sort of stuff. Then you've got to, of course, put it together. Now there's a bit of an art putting it together when you've got six or seven or eight different circuits going together. You want it to be neat, you want it to be bush proof. So there's a lot of skill required to make that quite bush proof. Now if you'd of course pay an electrician to do an auto lecky, yeah, you'd be up for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So if you had the Red Arc Red Vision distribution board, you wouldn't need half the stuff that's on this table. So it'd make for a much simpler and easy install. You wouldn't need this fuse block, you wouldn't need relays, you wouldn't need a bunch of fuses stack of this wiring you could get rid of straight away. You have the monitor that comes with it, you don't need any of the switches here. So basically this half of the table you can absolutely forget about because it really is a simple solution. Now look at the table and tell me that's not a way less complicated 12 volt system than if you were to do it without a red vision. Let's take a closer look at the panel. You can wire your fridge, lights, air compressor, any accessory you want into these already fused spaces here really easily. Because they're wired into here, you can control them on the red vision panel. So I can turn my fridge off and on. I've also wired a temperature probe from the Red Vision into it so I can check the temperature on my phone or on the screen. I can turn lights on and off from my camp chair. And this is almost cheating. I can turn the compressor on and off while I'm kneeling down to air up. How easy is that? There's so many other practical ways of wiring stuff into the Red Vision, you can monitor up to six water tanks. So if you're towing or have a built-in water tank, you can see exactly how much water you've got left. So when it comes to fault finding with the Red Vision system, it doesn't get any easier. So say you've blown a fuse, instead of spending hours searching for it, you know, you might've had a wire up through, you might've had a short circuit, something like that. You can simply look at the distribution board and look at the fuse that has the light on above the fuse. It really is as simple as that. You can also check on your um, little display monitor here. I can see here, I've got a little red light where my light is. So that means my light fuse has been blown. One step again, if you're still not convinced, it's easy to fault find, you can jump on the app on your phone and it tells you exactly which one, again, my, my light here has blown a fuse. So that makes fault finding super, super easy. Now, if you're after the ultimate 12 volt system, you really can't go past a Red Arc Red Vision system for the back of your four wheel drive. Sure, it's gonna cost a little bit more money than just about every other system out there, but look what you get. You know, you're gonna save some money when it comes to less switches, less fuses, a lot less wiring. It's gonna be a lot simpler to install, but the big benefit for me is it's really easy to troubleshoot. It's ultra bush proof. And if you wanna add another circuit to it later on, well, you can do that as well without messing up that really neat setup. So at the end of the day, that's why I chose Red Vision for this vehicle. Well, there you go, guys. Hopefully that's answered any burning questions you might have had about what battery charger to run in your four-wheel drive. Now, to sum up my thoughts, it goes like this. Get the fastest DC to DC charger you can get that fits within your battery specifications. Number two, make sure you can monitor your 12 volt system. At the end of the day, you need to know what's going on in there. And number three, if you're looking for a very advanced system, make sure you check out Red Vision because I reckon that is a state-of-the-art setup. And I'll tell you what, it works an absolute treat in the Dirty 30. Well, there you go, guys. If you've got any questions on anything I might not have covered, make sure you put it in the comments below. I'll go through those comments and do my best to answer all your questions. Till next time, I'll see you around.